in, in the next few minutes, I would like to speak about uh, my experience and mm, my thoughts about malware analysis, uh, why and how to do it. And uh, it is a, a very introduction, uh, introductory mm, talk. Uh, I hope I will manage to do some demos as well. And uh, you can follow my slides in this URL. Uh, about myself, I'm Zoltan Nemeth from the Hackerspace uh, Seged Hungary, and you can uh, find me in this uh, email. Uh, I taught uh, at the university for about 18 years, and uh, last year I moved to a, a private company where I do some uh, security stuff like uh, this is also includes malware analysis and pen testing work so uh, this talk is uh, inspired by this uh, <coughs> great talks by Lenny Zelster who is a chance uh, um, trainer and Sven Thomas and uh, I also learned a lot about uh, Sergei Frankov uh, video lectures on the YouTube, so mm, this talk might be seen as my version of this introduction in Malvern Analysis uh, uh, stuff, uh, but I try to make some <coughs> actual demo as well. And uh, of course there are many others, like I, I like to mention Gabor Sapanos, who at Hacktivity uh, talked with Malware Analysis with great enthusiasm, and this was great, yes. So as you know, there are many, many malwares. Uh, there are not uh, very exact classification. We can talk about viruses, worms, trojans, and rootkits, and in spyware, I, mean any information stealer malware like keyloggers or mm, password stealers and of course uh, today is one of the most uh, threatening uh, <coughs> malware are ransomware and uh, there are of course adverse malvertising and uh, crypto mining malware and many many more so uh, of course you can find these and at least uh, from the news you know them. And uh, next I would like to say something why uh, malware analysis is interesting and why it is useful. Uh, of course for hackers it, uh, the main motivation is curiosity, how these codes work, are they so sophisticated as you might think at first and uh, common malware are uh, just not. So, so you will see that uh, at least in my imagination was that uh, they, they, they are much, much more complicated than uh, usually are. And uh, this talk is about the, 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 the idea that uh, this is a very fun way to learn reverse engineering as well. And of course for defenders it's a daily job to analyze malware, to derive indication of compromise or write uh, Yara rules for detections. And uh, of course uh, study the attacker's technique and tactics. And also it is very important to understand the security products and uh, their limitations. And uh, th this is very good for, if you, you will see that uh, we will see a sample that only about 20% uh, of uh, antiviruses uh, recognize them as a malware. So uh, there, there are certainly uh, place for improvements or, or security products. And of course for offenders it's also important to study malware, to learn new attack tactics and bypasses, and to gain some first-hand experience for security awareness trainings. And uh, I think uh, besides for all, for, for personal security, you will see that it is not a real magic to do. So. 
Uh, another thought can be that it is, as I mentioned, easier at least to start this uh, study than you might think. And <coughs> Uh, today there are many, many good tools and online services, so I will show you some more, probably my, my personal preferences and uh, probably not the, the latest or the, the best ones, but uh, those that uh, was uh, worked for me. And uh, I found that uh, when you analyze a common malware, it is important to notice that uh, they are hiding for automatic detectors, antiviruses, or EDS, EPS uh, um, uh, devices, and then not, not from human analysts. So, it, of course, there are some obfuscation and some tricks in them, but you, you can overcome with uh, these. Uh, if if you uh, determined enough, and uh, I think uh, malware analysis is also good because it, it has many levels. So uh, both the malware have many levels of sophistication. You can choose one uh, easy and uh, well-known malware to analyze at first, and you can get the, the levels of EPT uh, malwares uh, later, and. Uh, not just malware codes are different, but the level of our understanding as well. So it is probably very easy to answer the question that the one code is a malicious or not. And uh, this is the, the first level of understanding. And uh, later, if you would like to see how it works, you can uh, <coughs> determine the, the main behavior of the code. And uh, if it's not enough, then you can go inside the code and analyze it more precisely and uh, write some script to emulate them and uh, really understand. But you can choose uh, what is your goal and uh, what is uh, the, the level of understanding you can or, or would like to reach. And uh, as I mentioned, with some patience and uh, determination, I. Or, 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 or my opinion is that uh, malware analysis is devoted to success, so it, it's only a matter of time and determination uh, whether you can uh, analyze some codes and, and uh, really understand it. The, the, the next thing I, I would like to mention is the so-called pyramid of pain, uh, and uh, this is from a paper of David G. Bianco from uh, 2013, and uh, this uh, tried to answer the question that how hard is it for an attacker to change certain indicators of their malware. At the bottom of the Pyramid is the, the hash values. You, you know, uh, <coughs> it is uh, very trivial to change just adding or changing some byte at the, the code without uh, <coughs> Uh, without any implication of their behavior. Then the malware usually use some IP addresses that is very easy to change and uh, easy to block uh, in. Uh, security devices, so today they are mostly using domain names as well and domain name generation algorithms. And uh, it is harder to change, but uh, still less annoying that uh, the, the network and host artifacts like, uh, for example, the, the name of the files or the registry values or some mutexes. And uh, these are the main uh, field, field of Marvel analysis, so they are, uh, these are usually called the in, um, indication of compromise, and these indicators are studied and uh, <coughs> uh, written in, in threat intelligence feeds and uh, shared uh, between uh, antivirus companies and uh, defense uh, agencies. And uh, then we'll get the, the, the tools that uh, I mean can be some, some form of obfuscation technique or uh, some, uh, for instance, some uh, virtual machine code execution 
and uh, uh, some some cryptos and uh, like that that uh, also have some some common uh, behaviors and uh, features that can be attracted extracted and and the, the the top of the pyramid is that called ttp is the tactic tactic techniques and procedures are uh, more about the operation of the, the malware authors than the codes themselves so uh, i think malware analysis can be seen as climbing this pyramid and uh, trying to investigate things and from from the trivial try to to get more and more advanced features. And uh, <coughs> we can divide the, the, the methods and uh, uh, the tools uh, for at least uh, four uh, category. We have some basic static analysis uh, tools and dynamic analysis tools at the basic levels. They are more focused on the, uh, the uh, data and uh, not the code and uh, the, the artifacts and uh, for the code level analysis we can use dynamic and static code analysis and uh, of course you know the the, the difference between the uh, the uh, static and the dynamic analysis is that uh, in in the static we do not run the code and, and uh, the dynamic analysis is some uh, involves running the code and uh, investigate the behavior and of course that there, there are uh, open source intelligence that it is very important that uh, you are not alone when analyze a malware you can use the others and if it's not uh, taken as an intellectual challenge to understand the code for yourself and you you have some time to finish it then it is very important to see what the others done and today there are many many very good and uh, detailed analysis about Malvers, even sophisticated ones like, like APTs. And <clears throat> next, I would like to show you at least the, some features of static, uh, ba basic analysis of static and dynamic uh, malware analysis. And for our static analysis, we mainly focus on the data like the, the hashes, uh, the file structures, for instance, for exe files, the, the, the P and F headers or section, the imports, the executable uses, the metadata are also very important when the file was compared, for instance, sometimes you can find the, the debugging symbols and the, the path of the debugging symbols can tell you something about the machine that the code was compiled. And uh, also we would like to see embedded artifacts like other files or resources that are uh, very common to have uh, a malware that is a dropper that has uh, a file included uh, in then that is written to the disk or injected to another process. And uh, of course for Office document we would like the macros and for, for PDF, for instance, a JavaScript and so on. And of course, the strings can be very useful. The, the strings utility can, I will show you, uh, uh, can reveal many, many things about a malware. And uh, I can say that the, the packer or cryptor or, or obfuscator can be identified also by static features as well. And uh, in a higher level we can use uh, not hashes but uh, certain binary patterns that uh, can be formulated as uh, Yara rules. Okay, so uh, about the tools, my preferred basic static analysis tools are mostly included in the Flare VM. The Flare VM is uh, made by the FireEye uh, company and made public. It's similar to, to Kali Linux, but uh, it is more for malware analysis stuff, so for, for, for defense stuff. Oh, sorry, it's not. the internet has gone.
No internet. Do you have internet? So it it was my bad to put my presentation on the cloud. Pardon? Never mind, I probably can take my demo part here <laughs> before, before the internet comes back. So the, the demo will be that uh, uh, let's analyze a, a real malware uh, that I downloaded from the malware bazaar uh, sharing sites. And this is a document. So the Yes. Oh yes. Let's check it. Yes, here. But Okay, so uh, I would like to use the, the Flare VM, which is a complete uh, virtual machine. It is, it is very useful because you can uh, revert it uh, after an investigation. And uh, most, more importantly, you can get back to exactly one point of uh, the, your analysis. So it can happen with me that uh, in a debugging session, it is, is very important to have some fixed point when I was at, on the right track. And if something went wrong, I, I could go back. And. Uh, uh, I like the PE Studio as a static analysis tool and PE Bear to I investigate uh, PE executable and I mentioned the string utility. For Office document, I like the tool uh, developed by DDS Stevens like PFID or PDF parser and OLEDAMP. And of course, uh, the EXIF tool or BINWALK to uh, <coughs> get uh, included files or so on. And so the, the demo is consisted that uh, imagine that you get a phishing game here that can be very dumb, dumb one that uh, it is, uh, there are some invoices that you couldn't uh, pay, you, you haven't paid. And uh, so there is a document that describing the situation. And of course, uh, if you see this document uh, can contain some macro. So let's see some uh, document that uh, we will investigate. And this is come from this uh, Malware Bazaar, uh, new recent uh, sharing site and you can see there are several ones. So this was actually downloaded by me uh, today morning. So let's see it. That in, in the VM. So we have this file and one tool I mentioned this OLED dump. Pardon? 
Yes, here. Mm -hmm. Properties font. Is it enough? Not. But I. It's it's too much. Okay, and I can make it bold as well. No. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see uh, if I just run all a dump that is uh, see the, the objects included in this Word document, and it also identifies two macros as the sequence 21 and 22. So if you need some help, you will see somewhere the select uh, attribute that can be used and it is also useful to if you know that it is a VBA script that uh, use the minus minus V that's VBA decompress so just select 21 and VBA decompress of this file and we use can um, extract the macro and you see it is someone obfuscated but does not contain any obvious uh, malicious behavior and you can also notice this something uh, obfuscated or encrypted here because it's a long long string and it is important to notice that there is some split operation somewhere here that also use this string it can be important later but if you see the other macro is more interesting or more revealing about the true behavior of this document because it contains this document open macro that will be automatically executed and if you notice this one is the name of the second macro if i remember correctly yes this er so from this we can extract these macros by dumping them to files as VB script. This can be the second one. And this one is the first. We can debug them, but instead I would like to show you that the string command can also be used to extract the next stage of the malware. So there are many, many strings, but I can restrict the minimal length by saying that I'm interesting string length of at least 10. And then we can see this long, long obfuscated ones. And we probably need only these. So I can s copy this specific string like SS55DA and just grab those ones from the strings. Was it? S55DA. 
S55DA. Yes. And let's copy them into a file. And uh, the next tool I would like to show is uh, the cyber shave. If I take this obfuscated string, I can <coughs> ma easily make some modification. For instance, if we observe uh, these strings, we can see some repeated patterns. And uh, for instance, we can see that uh, this one 5DF until the end of this closing bracket. And we can replace them as not a regex, but, but a single string with some stars. Then it can be revealed that uh, it is basically a uh, base 65 encoded something data. So if I made some modification because it has some problem here that at the end of the strings there are some uh, bad characters or something like this A, but I can correct them later. Yes, so let's replace this string by zero and let's bake it and follow the investigation of this one. Yes, and uh, you can see that it is encoded this PowerShell command and the minus A flag means that the, the next string will be base 64 encoded. These are not really interesting, but we must correct this one as well. And there are one here with starting. Oh, that. Okay, and hopefully this is the whole base 64 encoded string. So let's try to decode it. It is called base 64 for from yes and you you can see that it is uh, certainly a PowerShell script but we can beautify it by something called decode yes this decode text because it uses UTF little endian encoding. <laughs> yes, and it, it, has, it can be seen that it is still obfuscated because of this concatenation of subwords. So it is very easy to read off also from that by replacing these plus symbols with nothing. Oh, uh, it is not regex, simple string, yes. And we can also uh, read of the, the standard back quotes that is generally used to obfuscate power shell script. And we last we can make the last thing that we can replace the C 
semicolon with semicolon and line break. So this can be our PowerShell script. Hop. I did something wrong. Oh yes, here is it, but something left. And uh, this is the end. I can show in, in, in a text editor. This is the same code. And you see that it is it has some obfuscation as well that uh, there are some uh, super, uh, not necessary operations, but uh, the, the main thing that it contains some URLs and uh, also this uh, cycle that uh, tries to download a file from each of these URLs and then with invoke item it tries to run them. So uh, we can concentrate the URLs as the next binary step of the malware and uh, I can tell you that so this was the comments you can see later that what I was executed, we used strings, and at the final strengths we have this downloader PowerShell script, and with e some easy day obfuscation we get the following URLs. And uh, <coughs> I checked that today uh, from these seven URLs, four was working, and uh, four can be used to download some uh, PE executable M1, M4, M5, and M, M6. And one URL was uh, flagged as a phishing site. Uh, probably they were, uh, the, 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 the owner were, not, uh, were notified and uh, they changed. And two of them was forbidden and not found. This is probably uh, also done by the authorities or the owner of the best site, but almost surely they are a legitimate site that was compromised by other automatic attacks to just to host uh, this malware. And if you are interested that there are a, a, a user called Cryptolemus who uh, regularly put these URLs on, on his Twitter account so you can see and uh, uh, also the, the, the Malware Bazaar file was uh, submitted by him. So the next step could be uh, continue with some dynamic analysis and uh, it is, is a more dangerous investigation because then we running the malware, of course, in an isolated lab environment. Usually a, a virtual machine is enough. Uh, of course, very sophisticated malware can uh, detect the, the virtual environment and uh, they, they need to be uh, executed in a bare metal, bare metal uh, hardware. And here we can use monitoring tools to observe the behavior of the running malware, of course, the user input and output and some malware need to be triggered, so need some user interactions to do the real behavior. And of course, we are looking for process creation or termination and uh, runtime, we can investigate many, many more things in the memory. We can uh, monitor registry access, file system, network operation, and so on. And there are very good tools even to investigate API calls like API monitor. So I usually 
do these uh, or you use these uh, tools the, the process hacker or a registry short or rec short is is, is the the last uh, sophisticated level of uh, monitoring and uh, you can get more information about the API monitor and uh, even more from system events like uh, mo uh, using the process monitor and uh, uh, of course uh, you can use the fake net to simulate uh, a network environment and Let's see a little demo of that as well. So probably I need a snapshot of my I hope it will work because uh, there are some randomization as the in the malware and uh, I even do not know the, the file name that, or, or the process name that will be created because it changes by any uh, execution. And it is a time consuming to uh, put everything in, 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 in the well defined state and uh, prepare my tools, so I already run this RecShot tool to uh, store the file system uh, hashes and uh, all the registry keys and uh, after running the mal malware I can use a second shot and compare the uh, two shots to see the changes and here I'm uh, running uh, a, a tool called FakeNet to see the network behavior and here is the process hacker just uh, for the signed processes uh, to see process creation or termination and just try to run this M1 and yes he can see that uh, one new process was created and if we investigate it probably you will not see but it is uh, <coughs> started by a non-existing process probably the M1 exe was uh, also terminated and uh, this is the parent process of this one and uh, if you see the runtime strings, then you can notice some interesting, if you, for instance, filter with something like post, uh, you can see post squares with uh, strange URLs and the other thing that can be noticed that if I looking for something dot exe I can Okay, then not that way, that's just string counting CMD exe. Not that. Yes, here probably, sorry, I cannot change the font here, but uh, there are all the processes running at the current moment and in this fake net, I should see that uh, the, the malware is communicating with some encrypted post uh, 
uh, post request that probably containing all running process and uh, this uh, goes to some uh, IP address that is already known to have malware in it. Sorry, it's not working at the moment, but probably we will see. So uh, probably I do not have time to uh, show you, but just a, a few think about advanced dynamic analysis, uh, by which I usually mean uh, just debugging. And uh, this is a very time consuming task because you need uh, to put breakpoints and uh, many, uh, basically it's a, a trial and error uh, or of uh, step in and step over to, to monitor the behavior which, which uh, subroutine is unimportant and can be run by just a step over and which one is uh, something interesting happen and uh, you, you need to step in. And uh, of course some hints like the, 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 the process list or an IP address or, or some string or, or even an API name that will be called is, is a great hint and can be used to put uh, your breakpoint or just uh, see the, the data or the code basis to get some uh, point of interest uh, to, to debug. And uh, of course you, 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 you you almost uh, always could not uh, debug the, the whole malware. You, you, you must concentrate uh, in, in interesting code parts like API codes or memory writes or, or something. And uh, here also the annotation of the code is useful. You can give names for the procedures or, or uh, certain uh, data or memory uh, cells. And uh, I like the uh, x64 uh, uh, db because it can uh, handle five uh, memory dumps and I can put the hardware breakpoint to them and uh, see the changes uh, uh, as well. And uh, unpacking is uh, uh, very important as well and can be very or more easily run dynamically because if if you 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 put the breakpoint in a in a good pace you you can dump the the other uh, stage of the malware either the uh, injected process or or or, or, or the exify writ written in the malware and I also found that the, the skill hide is, is, is very useful for uh, malware that uh, do some uh, uh, sandbox detection because it uh, emulates uh, the, the things that it is uh, <coughs> running in, in, in not a debugger or a sandbox but uh, in, in a real hardware. And uh, of course, the, 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 the real reverse engineering is, is, is the advanced code uh, static analysis. Uh, it is even harder than debugging, but uh, uh, can and sometimes be integrated with debugging. There are two good tools, the IDA Pro, which is an industry standard, and also have a quite expensive decompiler by Hexrays. And uh, the NSA2, the GIDRA or GIDRA is uh, at the moment uh, does not integrate uh, with uh, the, the, the debuggers, but uh, instead it is free and has some decompiler as well. And uh, I found that in IDA Pro you mainly work on the, the assembly code and try to annotate the, the, at assembly level, but in uh, Ghidra you more focused on the, the decompiled C-like code and uh, try to make the, the C type and uh, the, the name of the parameters, the, the number, the name and the type of the parameters and the, the function call and can be very, very good tool. If you like to see, there is a guide called uh, 
Gitra Ninja and it has some very, very good videos how to use this tool and what this tool of capable of. These tools are both very, very sophisticated, but you do not need to know every feature of them to use them. So with some practice and some YouTube guides, you, you, you can use them as well. So uh, my concluding uh, thought is that uh, even with this basic static and dynamic analysis, we were able to reveal some uh, main working of uh, the observed sample. And uh, this is very typical that uh, today's this, uh, this is a banking malware, by the way, is starting by a phishing email that contains some uh, VBA macros uh, that, uh, of course, the user must uh, uh, enable uh, to run. And uh, then the macros uh, uh, construct uh, uh, PowerShell script that uh, is used as a downloader, that uses a compromised website that uh, uh, downloads an uh, exe file, which is a dropper, that uh, it means that it contains another file, it is another exe file, and uh, then uh, some C and C communication will be done. And uh, that far that we can uh, see for, from the first steps. And uh, of course, uh, there are many remaining things to do, like the obfuscation. Yes, we, we can conclude that the obfuscation is everywhere, but these are for automatic tools and very easy to overcome. But many details left uh, for, for advanced analysis, like uh, how they encrypt data and which data are sent to the CNC server and uh, what is uh, got from there, and uh, which is the persistence mechanism. Uh, if we, we compare the rec shot, the, the, the the, th the tool I run uh, before and after running uh, the malware, that it is it is written that we can see that with many, many changes, because the Windows is very chatty, we can see that one folder is added. This is the uh, in the user app data local folder. And uh, as we seen this file demo M1 exe was deleted, but a new one called this is uh, uh, written and executed. But uh, here we, I haven't seen any s sign of, of past distance, so no scheduled task or uh, uh, service was created. Probably because uh, that there is one more step of uh, doing some privilege escalation, and probably it is done after downloading something from the CNC server. It can be investigated later. And uh, of course, uh, there is possible further, anal anal uh, further an operations can be seen of this malware and many more. So probably that's all I wanted to see and show you. I do not consider myself uh, uh, a very expert of, of the subject, but Mm, from from this uh, one year that I deal with malware, I found that it is it is a very challenging but also very fun and uh, interesting subject. Thank you for your attention. And question, of course. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. I have this question: You showed this sheet of cyber shape or whatever the uh, site was called. Yes. Yes. But uh, I wonder if I have a client and I have an MBA, I don't want to upload any stuff to. You to do not have account. to. You can uh, uh, use it locally. Ah. It, of course, you know that it is, was made by the English uh, secret agency. Okay. 
So like, 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 like Ghidra, sometimes the, the agencies do some and share some good uh, also for hackers. And I found this tool is, is, is uh, very useful or, 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 or easier or, or faster than, than writing your own scripts. Yes. Okay. Uh, you can download it, and uh, I, 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 you usually if put. I download it, do I download an author binary? No, it, it is it is some JavaScript. So I can show you. It yeah, is okay. it is it is ju just uh, just uh, here. It is it is just a folder in my. I believe it works quite well as, as an offset, okay. o o offline tool as well. There's no other questions, I have another one. Do you have? This might be off topic, but if, uh, for example, if I obfuscate uh, JavaScript code, is there uh, any way to Yes, uh, obfuscation is also some hardening. So I know some, even some online site that called JavaScript Beautifier that can make some uh, obfuscation um, is uh, can, can reverse some obfuscation very well. But it, it depends on the technique. So if you use some certain technique of obfuscation. I can uh, write another tool that uh, just reverse this technique and uh, it can be made automatic. Even unpacking can be made automatic at some level. So the Sergey and the, the, the Open Analysis Live, they are two guys, made some public service like uh, Unpack Me that you can send a sample and uh, they try to unpack it and send the, the embedded uh, file you back or you can download it. Of course, it, it is also a question whether you are allowed to uh, share your, uh, your Marvel sample or not, or, or would like to share it or not. But, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, so obfuscation is, uh, I, I think it's, it's a hardening, but uh, almost never uh, uh, or really gate of, 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 of forbidding something. I think it's a binary obfuscation like making a, a whole virtual machine that some software protector tools like Temida and V VC or some protect. So some protectors that made by in, to, 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 to protect intellectual property. So you, you need to give you, uh, your binary to, to, to some customer or client, but you do not want to share your code. Uh, these are sometimes used and can be very hard to reverse, uh, even in malware. But I usually see that it, 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 it is, it is a, a very high level, so an average malware will not use them. Uh, it, is, it is very so, so it's easier to bypass antiviruses without uh, such, such, such uh, sophisticated tools or cryptos. But uh, we, we can face that with the fact that in, in the darknet there are tools and services that just cryptos and they, they, there are such services that you send the, the, the bad guys your binary files and you can download uh, such version or cryptid version of it that functionally equivalent, but uh, no antivirus will found it. And then they, they, they change the, the crypting and the obfuscation so that they can guarantee that uh, the, as a service for a level of time, no antivirus will, will found your malware. And it it is sad. So, <laughs> but 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 uh, we must face is that the, the, the antivirus technology is, is very limited, or or can be more easily bypassed than than than, than the average person or, or the customer thing. Yes. I was wondering when you downloaded the sample, did you know that it's an emulated sample? Yes. Okay. Because because it 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 it, 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 it 
Yes, it was because uh, I, I I know it is it is uh, I think it's uh, it's uh, important today because there are a newer uh, wave of uh, Amotet. They, they are starting to making the new version that is called Epoch Free that uh, uh, coming and that there are some. So you, see, you see there are, there are many Amotet sites and uh, uh, one of the most uh, important or, or, or uh, well-known malware at the time. And, uh, Is it Amotet Pardon? Is it Amotet uh, For me it's not because I'm not, not so... Pray. If, if I would uh, have done it from uh, decades that probably I said that it is boring but they, they are also involving so so the obfuscation sometimes change and uh, the crypting some changed and uh, to tell the truth I was not uh, very good at the basic dynamic analysis as you have seen it so I I haven't done it in two days probably I, I will need uh, I, I wasn't able to run it uh, or, or study it really in the, the debugger because they they they, um, they quit from the debugger. They they somehow detect it. Probably I will see that how can be. Yes, and uh, the agent Tesla is is also a favorite one, but uh, it is uh, I think is uh, easier to investigate because of uh, written in .NET and uh, you can, you, you probably know that it is very easy to reverse .NET code or, or easier at least. Okay, either, either question, any? Okay, then thank you for your attention. Bye.